The heat here in central Ohio has been almost unbearable lately, so having operational air conditioning and everything has been a major priority. Buckwheat managed to get the air conditioning up and working in Dad's old Chevy pickup truck, and thankfully we've got air conditioning in the shop. Billy decided to bring his 79 Mustang in and start pulling the engine apart so we can put a set of heads and a camshaft in it, maybe swap the intake, and maybe even a new carburetor. When he pulled that 408 Ford apart up at Bob's last week, it had a nice set of heads and even a nice trick flow camshaft that turned out to be the same cam that Billy used before in his old Mustang. So anyway, now that he knows he's got all these parts laying around, he wants to put everything to use. And while he and Kenny are tearing the Mustang apart in my shop, I get a phone call from an old buddy of mine. It turns out he owns this beautiful Marina Blue 66 Chevy 2 Nova. And he asked if he could stop by today to have me look at the car and see if I can figure out a little problem he's having with it. Fill her up with high cap. Jack Miner, the owner of Jack's Wax Car Care Products in Columbus, is the owner of this beautiful Chevy 2 with a very rare blue on blue color combination. The car was actually a factory six cylinder SS car, but the six cylinder is long gone and in its place, this really nice little small block Chevy. The only problem, it has a slight vibration that's driving Jack absolutely insane. Jack wanted me to take the car up the road so I could feel what he's experiencing and try to help him figure out what the problem is. The car is top quality front to back, top to bottom. Without bringing the car in and putting it on the lift and taking it apart, the best I can tell is that the torque converter may be out of balance. So Jack and I is gonna to get together sometime in the future and bring a Nova in and see if we can swap the converter out. So that brings us to Wednesday, and we've got some maintenance issues to take care of on trucks and trailers before we can go racing this weekend. So I arrange a meeting in the shop with my brother. We gotta go get some parts for this so we can start putting this back together. And we're going to Cincy Street Nights this weekend in Cincinnati, and we're taking all the cars. That means I need that tandem trailer. That means I need brakes because obviously my brakes aren't working very well. I wonder why that is. So can you take the dually and that trailer up the farm and see if you can get something done with these brakes? Yeah, I've already got parts rolling. And you're not gonna grease the hubs with a grease gun. Shortly after our safety meeting, Billy rolled in in the Calypso car, and we decide to head to Jigs to go pick up whatever parts he needs to finish up the yellow Mustang. He's actually thinking about taking it to Sensi Street Nights Friday and running it in 13-0 index, if the car will go 13-0s. Jegs had all the gaskets we need in stock right at 11th Avenue, but the valve covers and a set of tires he needs are up at the warehouse in Delaware. So we took a trip up there in the Suburban to pick that stuff up before we head back home. While we were out in the parking lot loading up the rest of Billy's parts, I get a call from home that my dad's there to visit in his old 36 Chevy. Dad managed to get this thing out of the shed and get it fired up and drove it down to our house to come visit. It's an all original, all original paint and interior 1936 standard Chevy two-door sedan. It's almost identical to the very first car he ever owned and drove when he was in high school. While he was at the house, Vicky helped him with some paperwork he needed to get taken care of, and he headed back to the farm, where Buckwheat is busy working on my dually, taking the rear brakes apart to see what's wrong with them. Initially, he didn't find anything wrong with the passenger side, but the driver's side is a totally different story. A little bit more wear and a lot more grease. So now it's time for a parts run down to Mark's. You better have my parts. Where's that chump at? Knowing full well we were in a time crunch, Jeremy ordered parts in yesterday. However, Mark forgot to order them. And what did you do? I made a mistake. Well, I did. I can't, I'm sorry. I made a mistake, but I'm going to fix it. See what I'm working with here? Mark placed a 911 call and had the parts delivered to his store immediately. We're all ready now. Look, we got all the stuff. Well... I'm glad I called yesterday. Right. You did start yesterday. So I could wait till today for the parts. Well, it's, hey, I'm slow, but I'm sure. To help ease the tension between he and Jeremy, Mark sent him back to the shop with a free box of sponsored rags. Well, I'm putting brakes on the old man's piece of shit here today. So I figured we'd take a minute and give a word of shout out to our sponsor here, A1 Auto Parts, Chump Holes Crappy Rags. He buys up dirty diapers and washes them and shreds them up. And sends them to you so you can have some clean, shitty rags. Well, there's still some poopy on some of them, but 
all in all, they're all right, I guess. But if you need some rags and you're tired of them box stores raping you for rags, Sharpie's crappy rags, A1 Auto Parts. By Thursday afternoon, Billy had just about gotten the Mustang all put back together. The only question is, will it be fast enough? That's a nice shirt you got there, Junior. My favorite show growing up. One of my favorites. While Billy's finishing up his Mustang project, I've got a couple errands to run. Are you ready? Ready for what? Well, we're going to Jack's Wax today. We? And lunch. I what? got off early. We have stuff to do. So for the last two months or so, we've been working on a little project with the guys in at Jack's Wax. And when Jack Miner was out at the house, he let me know that they're ready for me to bring the Malibu in, preferably somewhat dirty, to try out a new detailing product that I'd asked them about a few months ago. Thankfully, Vicki was able to get off work early today so she could come in with me to see this stuff in person. They had us pull the Malibu straight in the showroom where Vicki got to experience being here for the first time in person. This place is fancy. Jack's showroom is always full of really nice stuff, the least of which is probably my old Malibu. Believe it or not, that thing's actually dirty. <laughs> You're in the right spot. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Man. Of course, the first thing we discussed was me spilling antifreeze all over their shop floor with the Mustang. No wonder you felt bad messing this floor up. <laughs> yeah, when I brought that Mustang in here, yeah. it was a tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the reason we're here today is to check out this new detailing product they've come up with that cleans and protects paint, glass, chrome, and plastics as well. Smells just like bubblegum. Although it's hard to tell in the videos here, the Malibu is fairly dirty. And although I'm not a professional detailer, the stuff worked pretty well. Then you're not doing it as good as the professionals. <laughs> God, that smells good. I know, I it smells like it. a candy shop. I quickly went over the exterior of the car, but then I got underneath the hood where I was really interested to see how well this stuff works on chrome and how easily it could remove water spotting from aluminum, like the polished radiator in the front of my Malibu. I was pretty happy with the results. The stuff works and smells really good, and it's something I'm proud to be associated with. So we've been working on this for a little while. We brought that Mustang in here. It puked all over his floor. And oh I'm like, my uh, gosh. Remember that? Yes, I was but embarrassed. We were talking about some products that I like using and some different products that aren't Jack's Wax products that I like using. Mm -hmm. Remember that? We were yep. discussing that? Yep. And they've come up with something specifically for me. Cold Man oh, Shine. Look at that. <laughs> Silica based detail spray. So this will clean, protect anything. It's, you know, chrome, plastic, glass, paint, anything on your car. Mm -hmm. if you use this product to make it look really, really good. Wheels, Everything. chrome. Yeah, there's nothing. Just, the just wipe things. this car down. There's nothing you can't touch. Can we say the most important thing? Wow. It makes it smell like bubble gum. Yeah, your whole <laughs> shop will smell like bubble gum. Yeah, <laughs> you 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 start spraying it, and it, it smells like you just tore open a pack of Hubba Bubba. Sure so, <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you guys so much. I, we're really happy that you uh, bringing this on. Thank you. After our meeting at Jack's Wax, Vicky and I decided to take the Malibu into Gehanna to get a bite to eat. Typically, anytime I come in here with Billy, we stop downtown and eat at the Millstone Tavern, which was yet another first for Vicky. I've got a problem. Can you fit that in your mouth? No. That's what she said. After we ate lunch, Vicky had one more little errand that she wanted to run. She wanted to go in and see Miss Kimmy at Jigs and drop off some merchandise that Kimmy had asked her about and Vicky had made just for her. And then oh, look at the other one. Gosh, Jeg's colors, about? yeah. Yes. Black and gold. Awesome. <laughs> she has her own version in the Jeg's <laughs> colors. Yes, that is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Yep. You so You're welcome. After our visit at Jeg's with Miss Kimmy, we went back to the shop to check in on Billy to see how he's doing with the Mustang. Hopefully by the time we get back, he's got the thing running and he's able to take it up the road and test drive it. I think he's still holding out hope that he can take it to Cincy Street Nights and run 13.0 Index with it. So what's the verdict? We need more horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> so we're thinking like the dual plane intake that you've got on it kills it at 5,500 and that's about where the camshaft starts to run. Yeah. So it drives around good, right? It's torquey or 
moves around, but at wide open throttle, it doesn't rev like Stranger Things. Now this isn't the same set of heads you had. No, they're same intake runner size, a little bit smaller intake valve. These are a 190 valve and it had 202s, I believe, in the trick flow heads. So. Uh, yeah, these are Edelbrock Street E street heads. Yeah. And your other one had trick flows. They weren't even the twisted wedges though. They were just a standard right. 70, so they weren't nothing special. Right. I but they ran good. Yeah. Um, it, it ran like, you know, mid 12s on motor. And this thing right now is probably in the mid 13s. So we got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. I think intake, maybe MSD, ignition system, lock the distributor out. Uh, a little tuning. Single plane, a little tuning. I think it'll be there. Maybe put a 26 inch tire on it. Start banging it. Yeah. Then we put a kit on it. <laughs> so since the Mustang isn't quite fast enough to run the index, we decided we we're going to take the Malibu and let him drive it instead. So it is race day. It's Friday. It's Cincy Street night day. Tommy's got the Falcon sitting out here. He's going to load it up. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and take my Malibu and uh, Allison's Dart. I need to take the Malibu down to the local filling station, fill up the standalone with race gas, and uh, start getting the car ready for him. Now, typically, we would take Billy's Nova or the S10 down, but the S10 doesn't run right now, and the Nova doesn't fit the class rules for limited 28s at Edgewater. Anyway, in order to get the Malibu ready, I needed to make sure that the standalone's topped off with fuel. When I went to fill it up, I noticed that it is full of fuel, but it also looks like it's got some moisture in it. Since I'd rather be safe than sorry, I brought the car back home and pumped the fuel cell out, and it's a good thing I did. I went ahead and cleaned out the bottom of the fuel cell with a rag and some needle nose pliers, and then headed right back down to the station to top off with some fresh race gas. The next step to get the car ready for this weekend is to take it back home and make sure that the fuel pressure is set properly. It's very important to use the proper flow gauge because it doesn't show nearly the same fuel pressure as the liquid fill gauge on the regulator. Once the fuel pressure was set, it was time to verify ignition timing and make sure that the MAX-5 nitrous controller was communicating with the ignition box to pull timing when the nitrous kit was turned on. By the time I had all that done, the clouds were moving in and a light shower rolled in over our house while we were loading the cars. While the weather may not look the best at our house, down in Cincinnati, two and a half hours away, the weather looks clear for the entire day. It's just going to be extremely hot. This will be the first time we've ever tried to run my Malibu with track temperatures as hot as they will be today. Thankfully, there's open test and tune for index cars before the race gets started. So Billy quickly unloaded the Malibu and headed straight for the staging lanes to see what the car does with the tune-up that we've currently got in it. Our plan was to let the car leave on motor and then turn on the first stage of the nitrous kit at about three seconds into the run. I figure the car should run around 670 to 680 on motor in the heat today, so long as the car hooks up and doesn't have any problems on the starting line. But unfortunately, with the track temperatures hovering around 145 degrees, we had a serious traction problem. The Malibu spun almost the entire way through low gear, which resulted in a very slow 60 foot and the car running over two tenths slower than the index. After watching the video of the car leaving the starting line, Billy and I decided to make some shock adjustments and even lower the tire pressure in the rear tires to hopefully get this under control. If not, it's gonna be a short night for the Malibu this evening after the national anthem. They called for limited 28s to the lanes first and Tommy was able to pull off a win first round in the Falcon, but it was clear everyone was struggling on that starting line. The Falcon even spun but thankfully the cooler track temperatures as well as the shock settings made all the difference and Billy pulled off a win first round in the Malibu. Allison, however, wasn't quite as lucky. Tommy and Billy both made it to the final rounds of their classes at Edgewater, so we didn't get home Saturday until five o'clock in the morning. You'll be able to watch all that action on Street Racing Channel within the next couple of days. But Saturday night, our main focus was just trying to get everything unloaded and switch cars around between trailers. 
The Malibu and the Falcon needed to be unloaded and the Falcon needed to be put in my big race car trailer because the plan is to take it and Allison's Dart to National Trails on Sunday for one of their ET bracket races. We managed to get up early Sunday morning and get everything down to the track for our one and only time trial at 9 a.m. Tommy decided he was gonna run the Falcon in pro class and Allison's gonna double up in the Dart in sportsman and in pro. Running the Dart in two classes should allow her to get as much seat time in the car as we can possibly get her. Seat time and experience is absolutely invaluable in drag racing. This is where the boys got their start. This is where they started getting their seat time, learning how to stage the car, do their burnouts, and drive the finish line. The lessons they learned here at this track years ago in junior dragsters is the foundation for the confidence level and their ability to handle pressure. This is where our family started and where many other families start building their own legacy in drag racing. With so many tracks closing over the last few weeks all over the country, it's important, now more than ever, to get out and support your local tracks and their programs and spend time with your families doing what you love while we're still able to do it. All right, everybody, so it's Monday afternoon here at the shop, and I'm finishing this video up. I just wanna say that we had a wonderful time this weekend at Edgewater. Uh, there, was a, <laughs> there was a little bit of controversy over uh, our program and how Billy was, uh, well, Billy and Tommy were cutting their reaction times. Kenny Powers just pulling in here. We're getting ready to get busy out here in the shop. Billy's already here. He's out here getting busy. And uh, so there's gonna be a lot of really good footage on Street Racing Channel and on Gen 2 Garage this week. I can't wait for you guys to see it. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Um, a lot of <laughs> craziness, some wild action. Uh, Billy actually almost crashed my Malibu <laughs> uh, at Cincy Street Nights. That is, uh, you'll see. <laughs> it was, uh, it was bad. Uh, and Allison did a phenomenal job at National Trails on Sunday at the ET Bracket Race. I'm so, so proud of her. I'm so thankful for the opportunity uh, to be there with her and coach and help teach. Uh, Oh, wait till you guys see it. She is just, she is progressing so fast and she learns extremely fast. Her confidence level is growing. Her ability to drive and read track conditions and just everything. She's just improving extremely fast. She, you'll see. I, I'm not going to say no more. You'll see. You'll see in the video. Uh, Tommy's at home editing right now, and I cannot wait for this stuff to come out because just some of the most incredible footage uh, and action that you could ever hope to see on YouTube. So, hope everybody has a good week. I'm going to go out here in the shop and get ready to uh, get started getting the cars ready for this weekend. This weekend, this coming weekend, we're going back to National Trails for a back of the track race. We're running National Trail Raceway backwards at the Ohio Grudge Racing Uncaged event. Okay, so look that up. It's probably on the National Trail Ra Raceway website. Uh, if not, go to ohiogrudgeracing.com. I'm sure you can find all the information on it there. Uh, we're gonna take the Nova, Billy's Nova, and uh, of course the Falcon, and we'll be back there running the track backwards. It's a flashlight start, no prep event, pour your own puddle deal. Uh, I think Tommy won it last year in the Falcon. I'm pretty sure. I think he beat Raggedy Ann in the final, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but that's this coming weekend. Tony and Tess are coming in this week. They're going to be here, I think, Wednesday. And uh, we've just got a lot going on this week. So stay tuned, guys. Appreciate everybody watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting. 
and supporting our family.